All right, just for pretend, right? You got a fresh Cisco switch. You just got it unboxed. You power it up and you go to connect all your end devices to it. Everything is connected. There is considered a local area network. And by default, all those end devices are on that same local area network. Now, if you wanted to take that same physical switch with all those end devices, but you wanted to separate those end devices onto different local area networks, you could do that virtually through the switch by just assigning the switch ports to different virtual LANs, which are VLANs. And that's what we'll be going over today in this video because I created a lab. I put this packet tracer lab just for y'all so that you could just walk through this lab with me and get a better understanding of configuring VLANs and trunking and just trying to simplify that whole process and break it down for you. All right, here we're in the lab, right? It's just really basic packet tracer lab. The first step in this lab is just verify IP connectivity using ping for all the PCs. All right, to verify the connectivity, we jump into PC1 and we could just go ping 192.168.1.2. That one's responding, right? Dot three, dot four. Nothing too technical, real basic, just ping connectivity test, right? And we verify what I was saying and we verify basically what's going on in this network. We just got a basic network. Everybody can talk to everybody. Now as a network admin, this is where we're gonna logically segment the network into virtual LANs by going on to step number two, which is assigning PC1 and PC3 to VLAN1. And then we're gonna go ahead and assign PC2 and PC4 to VLAN2. So let's look at where these PCs are right now. We got PC1 and PC2, they're connected to switch two. But even though right now they can communicate with each other, they're on the same switch, we're gonna make it to where they can't communicate with each other on the same switch because they're virtually gonna be on different lands or different broadcast domains. And the same with three and four, even though they're on the same switch, virtually they're not gonna be on the same switch. They're gonna be on different local area networks. So to do that, we have to configure virtual LANs in the switch. So we'll start with switch two since PC one is connected to switch two. So if we log in here, all right, we're gonna start with switch two since PC one right here is directly connected on port 11. So we're gonna put PC one that's attached to port 11. We're gonna assign this port to VLAN one. And then for PC two, port 10, we're gonna assign that port to VLAN two. So what we wanna do is log into the switch and go into config mode. Here, we're gonna to go to the interface, zero slash one one, just to verify. That's PC one's interface that it's connected to. Once we get on that one, we're just gonna go switch port. The first thing we wanna do switch port mode access. That's gonna hard code this port into being an access port because by default, trunking can be negotiated on a switch port, but if you use switch port mode access, that hard codes it to only be accessed and to not negotiate any kind of trunking. But don't worry, we'll get more into the configuration and trunking in like the second part of the lab. Right now, we're just configuring or we're just assigning these ports to their VLANs and creating the VLANs. So the next step after we hard code it to be an access port so that it doesn't do any trunking on this port, we're gonna go ahead and assign it with switch port access VLAN one. Forgot to see. All right, and then we're gonna go into interface FA010, which is port 10 that's connected to PC2. And we're gonna assign PC2 to VLAN2, like it says in the instructions. So if we get on there, and then we're just gonna do the same thing, switch port mode access. So switch port access VLAN2. All right, so a message popped up here and it says access VLAN does not exist, so creating VLAN2. So all this message is saying is that there was no existing VLAN and it went ahead and created it, even though you could have created it by if you're in config mode, you can use the VLAN command right here and VLAN2, you could have created it like that. That's the same way. And then you wouldn't have got this message. 
now that we got ports one and two, I mean, I'm sorry, now that we have those ports 10 and 11 assigned to VLANs one and two, the next step, we're going to go back here. We're going to go on the switch one now, and we're going to do the same on switch one over here. So for this switch, port 11 is for PC3, so that should be on VLAN one. So let's go ahead and able to get us in the privilege exec mode, and then we're going to go conf T to get us in the configuration mode, and then again, zero, same thing, switch port mode, access, hard-coded, switch port, access, VLAN 1, and interface F010, switch port, switch port mode, access, and then switch port, access, VLAN 2, and again, we get that same message, we could have did it the other way, but we didn't. But everything's fine. So we've assigned one and three to VLAN one, and we assign the ports for PC two and PC four to VLAN two. All right, for step three, they want us to verify IP connectivity between the PCs and troubleshoot any failed pings. Since PC one and PC three are now assigned to the same VLAN, let's go ahead and ping from PC one, I'm in PC one right here, let's ping to PC three. All right, that's working as expected. So now, PC2 to PC4. Let's jump into PC2. All right, since PC1 to PC3 is working, the connectivity, now we do PC2 to PC4. Okay? All right, so now we're in PC2. We're just going to go and try to ping PC4. Now we're seeing that those pings are timing out. All right, so we know that the connectivity between PC1 and PC3 is good, and the connectivity between PC2 and PC4 is down. And this is after we've assigned them to just two different VLANs. But why is VLAN 1, where PC1 and PC3 able to communicate across the switches, but PC2 and PC4 are unable to communicate with ping across the switches? And this has to do with something called the native VLAN. And all the native VLAN is, is that is a VLAN that is reserved for untagged traffic. The tagged traffic is nothing more than the VLAN assignments. So VLAN 2 should have a tag of VLAN 2 when it's coming across a trunk link. The problem is, is that VLAN 2, when it gets to that link between switch 2 and switch 1, there needs to be a trunk to tag that traffic from PC2 because it's assigned to VLAN 2. There's no tag to put on it, so it's just going to drop that traffic. VLAN 1 is able to do it because that traffic doesn't need to be tagged, so it's not necessary. Now, if we created a different native VLAN, let's say VLAN, and we made it some real high number that nobody would use, like um, 1001, right? And we assigned that as the native VLAN, VLAN 1's traffic would also fail because now VLAN 1's traffic needs to be tagged to go across that trunk link. But there is no trunk link, which leads us to step number four, configure a trunk between the switches that will tag the traffic again. That's all we need to do is we need to configure that trunk so that it tags, okay, you're with VLAN 2, and it needs to be configured on both switch 2 and switch 1 because you can't have a trunk port here that's tagging the traffic, and then when it gets down to switch 1, it's not tagging the traffic there because the traffic's just going to get dropped. If you have trunking configured on switch 1, trunking has to be configured on switch 2. So let's go ahead and get into switch 2, and if we do show CDP neighbors, we could see that the switches on the FA01 interface, the other end of that switch. So we're going to want to go to interface FA01. And this is the port that we want to configure for trunking. And the command to do that is switch port mode. And instead of access, you're going to do trunk right here. And then let's go ahead and slide over to, since we did it on switch 2, we got to do it on switch 1. Like I said, it has to tag it on both ends so which one is also the port here i mean i'm sorry port one is also the port here so we're going to do a switch port mode trunk now let's go back to the lab and it says after we configure a trunk between the switches that will tag the traffic number five says verify ip connectivity between the respective pcs again we already did pc1 and pc3 now let's do pc2 to pc4 again so we go to PC2. All right, now that we're in PC2, let's try to verify connectivity to 
PC4 again. And now we see that the pings are successful before we had 100% 0% packet loss. And that's because we have now configured this as a trunk link, which is allowing VLAN 2 to come across over here and to hit here. Now, what if PC2 tries to ping PC3? Let's look what happens there. So PC2, if it tries to ping PC3, it can't because it's on a, it's virtually on another network. So it can't even hear it. Same with PC1. Virtually it's not on the same network as PC2 is, even though physically they're attached to the same switch. But again, to PC4, it's working because virtually those are on the same local area network. All right, that does it for this video. I appreciate all y'all for tapping in. So if you're feeling the content, again, please like it, share it, and comment and everything. Let me know down in those comments what other kind of tutorials or anything that you guys are looking to learn. And I'll try to share as much information as possible. I'll catch y'all on that next video. Holla at me.